last week, no demos. No demos, file seven. Present time to pair programming. There will be more. Is there one more scheduled? Yes, actually, we had one yesterday and uh, also with Zig. And next week uh, on Tuesday, we'll have one with Drew, Drew Brasher. Victoria spent all Mike's money, all in hotel, looking for sponsors. Victoria is here. Do you want to continue on that topic? Oh, I thought that uh, you asked if I want to continue spend Mike's money, but uh, yeah, yeah, I would like to continue. Your turn. Can do that now if you, if you want. Okay, uh, so we have a really good news because uh, we signed a contract with the Orleans uh, Hotel. So the uh, next Orchard Harvest Conference will take place uh, at the Orchard, uh, uh, sorry, uh, at the Orleans Hotel and Casino in uh, Las Vegas. And another great news is that uh, the registration is already open so uh, you can uh, book an early bird price now and uh, every info uh, can be found uh, on the orchardcore.net and um, i hope that uh, most of you can join us at the conference Control you, Mike, but microphone. Yeah, we should yes. have a, we should have a uh, Scrum style uh, planning poker there for 3.0 to make it uh, uh, make it local. Yes, and on that page you can uh, buy uh, your tickets. How many? Just 79. I can only buy 79. And uh, maybe I would uh, also mention that uh, with the tickets uh, we can uh, give uh, exclusive discounts on the Wow. Accommodation at the Orleans, Orleans Hotel and Casino. Can't hear you, Mike. Uh. OK. Nice. All the information is here. That means if you click on the link, I'll get in the files. Can you hear me now, hopefully? Yes. Wow. Yes. Well, if you have nothing to say, Anybody? Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes, no? but we can't. OK, Michael. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. We can hear you, OK. Well, I can't hear you now. Jeez. Well, I'm not saying anything. Well, the sure issue is that we don't know if it's time or Can you say so? OK, well, that's it. Thank you. Good job, everyone. Not me. I didn't do anything. Wow.
This is yes. the entrance of your hotel. Okay. Oh, this is the room. Okay. So Thank that's you. all all the news I wanted to share. I was just waiting that maybe Mike wanted to add something. Okay, so the conference is inside the, this hotel. Yes. So if you take rooms there, then it's closer. That's fine. There's a beach. Um, that um, that road from uh, to just to the right from the very thick one is the Las Vegas Strip, by the way. Uh, where you see all the red hotels. So if you want to do the, the actual poker, you can go there. I went there. I bought some shoes there. It's great, right? <laughs> and that's probably a story you should tell there. <laughs> can you yeah, guys I hear me? Any chance? Yeah, yes, we can. Oh, hear you, thanks. All right, good. It's working. I ordered some shoes, got them delivered there, and on my way to Utah, I went in Las Vegas airport, went to Nike, and then went to Utah. Get the shoes. Yeah, it's kind of close. I remember like so. So I'm not ten, sure ten if, you, uh, if you guys heard me earlier, but uh, nope, when you nothing. book your reservation, um, on the hotel, we got a group discount on the hotel reservation as well for more than just the two days. So if you're planning to stay after or before the event in Las Vegas, you can still get a really good room rate uh, with your stay if you choose to stay at the Orleans, which isn't far from the Strip. Uh, so just, uh, yeah, just a thought. You see, you can book from the 9th all the way to the 18th, any time in between. And, uh, you know, the room rates are relatively good. And they have upgraded rooms. They went through reno renovation recently, so all the rooms are renovated and it's pretty nice from what I was that's, told. That's cheap. It's the average, so it's cheaper. Uh, is that the real? The week. Is, is that the actual rate, Mike? That sounds like... Uh, it is, but then there is also a plus tax and fees, so that's... So you're going to pay about $40 more probably. But all okay. the hotels, when you compare, that you're comparing that rate. Because all the hotels, they don't include the tax and fees. So even if you're booking around trying to compare, compare the top number. Because uh, they're all going to add oh, you know, resort fees and taxes. Yep. Yeah, it's doubling everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still a really good price compared to uh, everything else around us. So. And also the weekends is more expensive than weekdays. So weekdays is even cheaper. Everyone is going to Las Vegas on the weekend. Yeah, but then, you know, you can go before and after as well. So the the event is Thursday and Friday, I believe. And so you can come in before a day or two and then stay after or before, it don't matter. You see the price for the Friday night? The one for the three day. That's okay. Good. Awesome. Thanks for the update. Thank you. Well, not just the update, the theme, the world stuff. The update is the easy thing. Um, 
what's next? Oh, I will paste the links from Zoltan. So we have the link for the pics we have. Um, how do, do how do I call that? It's not Zig anymore, right? It's like uh, Zoltan spare programming or what is that? <laughs> Uh, no, it's uh, Orchard Core Pair Programming by Lombic. Uh, because the... Okay, it's easier to say it's on such dense pair programming. And um, so but that's for next week? Uh, yeah, uh, for next week we'll have uh, Drew Brasher uh, with... Uh, we all built some uh, content boarding module. So something else apart from theme development that we had uh, the last two times. We'll send the uh, Lombic's channel. Playlist? Is there a playlist or? Uh, it's under live. I'll say well, the live events are under a separate tab, but there's actually also a playlist. Yeah. Just all the previous ones. Okay, this one. Okay, cool. Done. Oh. Right, uh, so done. Do you have anything else? Go into the chat. Nope. Okay, what do we have? So, what did I say last week? Sponsors, um, that. Demos. Do we have demos today? They can have the next release, and we can do some status check of the one. Benedict. But Benedict do well. I don't see anything, but it doesn't mean very many. Okay, yeah. Branches working, updating, and PVC well for security. So that is coming soon. Nothing was merged otherwise. Orchard core, what do we have? This is a branch. Out. I delete. Check out any icon. Good. Okay. Main. What we have? Uh, five, seven here. This one, it's a branch. Fix the search admin menu item. So that is just refactoring in my classes. ID and classes. It's not refactoring, it. it's actually fixing the icon issue. Well, here? Yeah. Oh, I, I just saw this one, which was okay. Yeah. Oh, this one, did you figure out? That was an issue with that? Uh, no, that's actually not the issue. It was just an, uh, sometimes the model dot ID is no, but there's no point of adding the alternate. Um, so okay. we had it, but the issue I found it was the icon ID was wrong at, in one of the cases and which was the issue. And then while I was digging, I seen this, I'm like, okay, let me just fix it too. Good, update Microsoft identity package version. And log package version, Azure Identity package version, replace and um, go with the, it's the same package but the different repository and package ID. Supported one. Um, we are checking it about entries, it checks everywhere. 
type checking when important types from OCP test. Okay. Okay, Interesting. Yeah, I'm sure we can't validate that without importing it because it's a uh, This is dynamic, meaning there is name, but these properties will depend on what's there, so we can't have validation of these properties without knowing the value of this one. And there's no easy solution for that. Update the soft logic. In the asset grouping, okay. So what does it change in the end? So with this one, what happens is that we are able to, when we built an asset, assets, we were able to use the start uh, notation to say group any of these files and when you say grab any, it's not always in order. And so if we don't always guarantee the order, it it could, every single time you run it, okay. it could introduce a new change, which we don't want because it will cause assets to fail. And so with this, we properly group the uh, assets. We sort that order, uh, the paths, before we actually apply the logic on them. And so this will ensure that anytime we use a star, we use the uh, same sort every single time before we append them. And also if you have, so sometimes you might want to put a file, like a fixed file, and then the next one will be a star, and then the third file will be fixed. So you also want to make sure that you observe those uh, the sorting order that you put in the file because we need to honor your your uh, order. Uh, so, like for example, in media, you know that's one example of where we use that. You know, uh, we have some files that needs to be added first before we can catenate a bunch of files, which is using the star. So it just ensures that the sort order is honored. Yeah. Good. And then there is a new version of this file because the order now is stable. Correct. Yep. Um, should be in my file, please, as requested. Yep, we talked about this method to use. Instead of checking the quality of the types to interact last week, we should check that uh, this is a subtype and there is this new thing. Is assignable to. There is, a mis is a, there is an is assignable from historically, but nobody understands what order is assignable from what no assignable to is much easier to understand. Good rabbit. You want to remove that? I think he disabled it for, for auto, but you can still request it if you ping it. It can review yes. it if you want. Documenting. Okay. It's yeah. on demand, yeah. So it's um, it's just a file-based configuration for what we had uh, just before that. It overrides the, okay. the online configuration and it's completely on demand. To complete that was quick. Okay, so one final issue. So we really wanted to see existing stereotypes instead of a free book screen. So the suggestion were to provide 
on the concrete or suggestions when you are in the field. So you can still type what you want, but you also provide you. I need a suggestion. So let's see how it was done. I still help service. You really have a stereotype description. Yeah, it's kind of sad that we have that. Meaning this service, I don't, I don't think we need a service for that. Nice thing is that we can then inject the localizer. Um, scoped works. Maybe transient will be a little slightly better because this way we don't have to store it in the current scope to be resolved again. I don't think this will be resolved twice per request. It's usually when we display the UI during the request, we just want the values and then fill them away. But it's very, very small optimization. So customer user settings to attack provider, which says you can be a customer user. Yeah, that, that's super useful because people would not know that unless they look at the documentation, they can do that. I'd say we might even want, could even expose a description, it's called description. No, it's not called description. Yeah, this thing is called description, but it's just an ID and a display name. Could even expose description, maybe to let people know, or to, with a pointer to the documentation or to tell them what it does. Succinctly, just to move your settings. Okay, but that's great. Looks good. Why I say why I say maybe we should not have a service is maybe we should not have an interface and different implementation and just in the startup fill up an option object that contains these descriptions with a list. So you just resolve the content management options and you just fill up a list with the available stereotypes once and for all and done. This way, we don't have to create custom implementations and instantiate them and resolve them. There is just one object containing the values and done. As long as we can do also some localization with startup, can we? I'm not sure. Maybe not. Or maybe the method to be a code, we could register a callback that takes a localizer and then we will return that. And the UI will just say, oh, give me the description. Here is the localizer. Maybe that could be a way to do that. Yeah. Uh, it's still type sensors. These are the existing ones. 
and then plus the ones from the providers. Batteries. That's it. Okay. Still of service. End of view. Looks good. Good job. And we need some um, documentation. Targeting to see your same thing. Just well, explaining the, the great path. Okay. Please pause. The least query object type should be fitted from the database. So it's async, and this one, data loader. Oh, the skip, okay, the skip was the Not in the query, but in the result. Okay. Good. Just that date. Big PR from George to support um, the dynamicity of JSON nodes, which was something that was available in Mutonsoft by default, meaning if you cast a JSON object from Mutonsoft to a dynamic, a dynamic type, then we can do the dot notation for each property of an object, and it will resolve each property dynamically and give you the correct type of the value. And so this is implementing that on our JSON abstractions also. And that's fixing some JavaScript usage and not liquid, but JavaScript usage or view usage also. If you use, use, if you use a, a fluid object in, in your views, which is an object in your views, then it will reserve the properties directly. So that's good. Good job, George. Uh, and then this one is fixing liquid conversions. So when you get one of these JSON nodes, uh, JSON objects are converted to object value, which is a fluid thing. Dynamic object, which is the one we just mentioned, is also converted to an object value, which is a fluid thing. And now every list of the properties will be also converted to actual value, an actual fluid value. So you can compare. You know, yep. On that last PR, the one before this dynamic value, I don't think we're we still can convert string to a number. Like if the if the JSON has let's say string one, right? So the number one string, and we're trying to deserialize that to an integer property, I think it would still fail. Is that something you, we're planning to support or no? I don't understand your word, your usage of deserialization. I think I the same <laughs> comment last week. It sounds funny. Yeah. So you say uh, because this you know, PR is like if you are in the in the view and you do content item dot uh, content or data, which one is the property data? Let's say data. So this thing 
here. This is a dynamic property. So, you know, in content item, there is, there are two, there is let's say data is the JSON object. So the JSON object, the thing that we decentralized, okay, it's the, it's a tree of JSON nodes that is from the document. And then content is defined as a dynamic which returns data, but we cast it to a dynamic because if you access data, you have a JSON object and then you do dot properties and then you have to check each property if it's an object or a value and so on. So it's just a tree of JSON nodes. But what we want to do is something like content item dot, I'm not sure it's the content property, but assuming it's a content property, dot um, blog part dot uh, um, title, see which each of those are JSON properties, but that's the goal of the dynamic, that if you access a name, it will say, oh, you want to access the property name block part. Let me return you what it is. And instead of, and it will return another JSON object in this case, but that will also be a dynamic. And then when you do title, then it will say, oh, this is a property and the value is a string. So this will return you a string. Yes, now look at the, uh, that. That's not what I was exactly talking about. If you look at the chat, I posted uh, what yeah. I mean. So if you take the JSON string that, uh, if you look at my JSON string, it's an array, right? And then so have, you yeah. see where the weight, so you see the weight in my JSON yep. string, it's sure. a string, okay? Mm -hmm. But look where, where, if we map it directly to uh, weight, mm -hmm. and the weight is double, so, that will fail still. So yeah, is that so something we want to address? Because before it wasn't an issue. I, I, that's totally unrelated to this PR, I believe. These things okay. about how to, this, and you, you, you're right, like how to deserialize. Well, it's funny because we saw that wording differently also last week. Uh, so when you deserialize that thing, so there are two steps. There is deserialization. And in this case, you get like a JSON nodes, okay? Uh, uh, an object representation, an abstract object representation of all these things. So you get a JSON object, which has three properties, and in the end, you get a, a JSON value, which is a string inside. So that's the decentralization. And then there is what we can call the binding, which is let's map these objects, these three, to these properties. So it will, and then it, it should try to map a string to a double in this case. And that's literally what uh, that's that's what uh, system text JSON should do with options and everything. So that's a system text JSON. I don't know if I assume it should work. It doesn't. It doesn't. Before it did, like with yeah. Newtonsoft, it did. So now, I mean, that's kind of a breaking change. And if there's a way to avoid and, that, that's And better. how do you produce that? How do you have that saved as a string. How did you get the string here if it's coming from something like that? Yeah, maybe it wasn't coming from there. You know, because like in the past, you know, it it was deserialized or serialized using a different library. And that's I don't know, right? But like that's a case okay. where it's it's an issue, and if there's a way we can avoid it, obviously that's must be an option. System text here. Yeah. Automatic casting, or you can have converters, but that's not what we want. Or maybe that is what we want. Like we could add a converter that will fall back, that will say, oh, you are trying to convert a string to a number, so I will handle that, and this is how it will be done. Maybe that's the way to do that, but that's where there is no option for that. Yeah. So yeah, if you implement a JSON converter of string explicitly, you say whenever you read a string, call me, and it will tell if you can do that. 
Oh, do look, look at that here. Uh, there is one already, but assignable for property. And yeah, there is a this thing. Okay. So there must be, and uh, in the meantime, they must have added other options to do that. See, there are six That's the one we want. So maybe that's something to add in the main JSON options. Oh, a number handler. Okay. Hmm. We set this, this option here. Yeah. Let's try that. That would be great to have a repo about how we got there. I see, so strict by default. Allow reading from string. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll test it out. Thanks. Um, there. Yeah, this one is about. I uh, recently mentioned that converting um, these JSON abstract trees to with values of a template, so you can compare them and and update to. That's it. Um. Okay. Ultra two zero. What is issue my students is zero like said there was one my them to handle again related to what JSON stuff. So I just put a comment to ask how Simon got there or how we can understand what's happening there. Uh, so there is one bug we can change. Uh, the requests. The thing assigned to two zero it would have uh, displayed in the in the list earlier. We do some triage on Thursday again. I think we looked at what needed triage already. This one. There is no big thing. Yeah, my colleague Charlie just pretty much finished upgrading uh, our um, uh, our extensions to the preview version, and there there doesn't seem to be any anything else. There's no new bugs, um, but you'll we'll upgrade Orchid Core Commerce next, and uh, that's also a Fairly large solution okay. with a lot of tests, so we'll see uh, whether anything else comes out. Oh, that's good. That's at least one of the projects. That's good. In close. 2.0 coming up. I'm sure we may need Mike. What should call Mike? You know. You know, I'm actually wondering if the performance improved after you figured yeah. out that concurrency issue. Well, we still have some issues, but look at that before the work we did as well. And now, so there is some improvement, right? It's not like yeah. tremendous, but not much. we fixed some things. It's going up and latency is going down. So we are saving a few milliseconds on average per request. A few milliseconds, well, a few tenths of milliseconds, still some 10% or something, and same thing for RPS, uh, something like 10% improvement. Well, what is it requesting, though, that it just takes like one and a half milliseconds? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, what is it testing? What is it requesting that just takes one and a half milliseconds? Because that's uh, right. The, really uh, the, the about page of the blog recipe. There is just one content item, the menu, and rendering widgets. Well, there is layers, widgets, the content item, and the menu. What is rendering the about page of the blog recipe? That's this benchmark here. And, but you have to compare what is comparable. The machine is a 28 electrical cores machine. So it's a five years old machine, but it's a it's a good machine, right? So it's doing 20,000 requests per second at 1.5 milliseconds on average. 
and this is just the, the HTML page, right? There is no assets like CSS and otherwise done during the request. But same thing when you run websites, right? Yeah. There is the main page. And then, which takes like, can be quick, and then it has to load all the assets. But still, you can't, it's hard to go faster than that. And this is with SQLite, it can be a little bit slower with PostgreSQL because there is some network operation. Let's ignore, wait, let's ignore this point. I think I can say exclude a bit. And then two to three, three seconds in this case, because there is a network operation going on instead of SQLite, which is in memory. Um, is this public accessible, by the way? Yep. Yeah. You should come to the meeting more often. <laughs> I'm pasting the, the URL in the chat. So it's thanks. Yes. Uh, AKA.ms. Maybe so that URL should be part of the uh, documentations too. Uh, yeah. Nah. I mean, there, I, I, there are like 1,000 benchmarks on this thing, and there is one for. We, we could put a, a screenshot. Of the values of the results that would be maybe more useful than well i mean it's kind of good for reference like if you want to look at it you can go back and click on the url i mean no you can bookmark it but still yeah just a thought so i want to okay so let's see in the chat. And the page is MVC. This is in this page. Ah, uh, uh, what did I do? Stop sharing because the pop up appeared. Yeah, this is the MVC page. Now, other those we care about what should here SQLite and PostgreSQL. Mm -hmm. Can it and be that I don't see that menu due to some permission oh, missing? In the link I gave, it's at the bottom. Uh, There's a drop down. It's super not intuitive, but that's this was this one is the internal view, and the external view as using a, a menu at the bottom. I don't get it. But that's Pro BI. Well, it's not called Pro BI anymore. It's called what now? It's called. Well, I hear that there is a new name. I don't know what's the name of this one. Uh, I swear I, I don't find it. Uh, okay, let me open the link for you then. Oh, no, that's that's good. So if I go there and I open it, ah. See my screen? Are you ready? You see my Oh, you can click the middle of that. Yeah, okay. that's nobody will click there, right? <laughs> but that's what you did. It, I don't get it, but yeah, whatever. All right. And you don't have a choice. That's how it's designed. And you can compare Linux to Windows also, if you want to just compare the same physical machine and Windows and Linux, same machine, everything. In this case, it's for SQLite, it's faster on Windows, and for PostgreSQL, it's faster on Windows also, but little bit. And I wanted to show here uh, the big improvement in allocations. Keep when what was the change um, with the visualization? Oh, the, ser the serializer options that we cached instead of creating all the time. Because there is a lock, which is in serializing, serializer options. You can see it there. So that's interesting. Uh, yep, I don't know why I thought about it. We were looking at this PR just quickly. I won't click there. I 
pretty sure I know what's happening. Like every equal equal null is converted to the is null. I don't like it. I like the equal equal null. I don't see what's the issue with readability. I think it's 10 times more readable than the is because I'm too old to understand all the differences between equal equal and is. And there are lots of new syntaxes that you can use. The is like, oh, is it an object? Like this is, is it not an object or a value? And or you could do like less than 10. This I don't, I can't read it. If a is, I'm like, well, just write that. I can read that, right? So I don't agree yet. In a few years, maybe. Um, I So I'm just, here's my opinion. Um, I don't think it's worth it, breaking everything. The code while well, changing all the cultures. That I might change my mind one day, but personally. Uh, yeah, I I kind of agree there. Uh, you know, like pattern matching is great, but we are not actually matching any patterns here. It's just swapping every equal sign to any is. Uh, I, I really don't see the point. Um, one argument that people say, the C sharp guy, for instance, say that the equal equal uses the dot equals. This thing uses. I think doesn't can't you overwrite the equal equal? And you can't. Yes, that's what, that's what I just said. That's what I just said. Oh, because okay. the yeah. equal equal uses the dot equals, which can change per object. It's not a reference yep. check. So you could have something that is not null, but says I am null, right? And yet I'm like, fine, if this is what this object wants to be converted to be equal to null, even if it's not null, sure, like this one will not do that. So yeah, it has never bothered us so far because, so I don't think, I don't think that's something that. That should be the reason to change all the equals equals. Like integer, agreed. Like integer doesn't override the dot equals. So we are sure that, and this cannot be done, by the way. But yeah, so whatever. Or maybe if one day we decide to change, let, let's in some cases use the e if, it, if it's fine, then we'll do that. In some cases, we'll use is if it makes sense, but there is no reason to change all the current code to these. It's not adding any value. Okay. Questions, comments, topics? To zero is close. So we have one bug assigned to it and then Commerce to be migrated, validated, and then we should be good. Yeah, uh, we'll also update .nest, uh, which should uh, which should follow uh, immediately after that. Uh, so if you would like to wait for that, then I think that would be useful because we have a lot of random people doing random things there. Uh, so I would expect some bugs to fall out there too. Okay. Right. I think we're done. Uh, meeting on Thursday. Uh, yes, triage on Thursday. Um, next week. Yes, next week. Meeting still. There is a memorial day coming in the US, but it's just uh, Friday and Monday. Uh, long weekend. That's good. Okay. All, all good. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, bye-bye.